Hello, I want to welcome everyone to today's commercial lease negotiation webinar. My name is Julie Gilgoff. I'm the staff attorney at Legal Services for Entrepreneurs, part of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights of the San Francisco Bay Area. Thank you for joining us. These webinars are offered monthly to help small businesses in the San Francisco Bay Area negotiate successfully with your landlords and stay in your rented spaces. We'll offer negotiation strategies and also updates on the protections of the San Francisco Commercial Eviction Moratorium, which luckily was recently extended until September 30th, 2021. Before we get started, I wanted to introduce our valued community partner, Pavette Brackett, president of the San Francisco African American Chamber of Commerce, who I was hoping would open the webinar with some announcements and fill us in on what you've been seeing on your end, Pavette. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Babette Brackett, and I am the executive director, although, you know, president sounds so much better, but <laughs> um, just wanted to welcome everyone here today, and thank you all for participating. I know that there's a lot of um, nervousness around um, the shifting dates for the moratorium, but just wanted to reach out to the community and let everyone know that the city is working diligently to work with city partners like the San Francisco African American Chamber of Commerce, Ellisley, as well as Working Solution to provide additional one-on-one -on -one support for small businesses who are facing um, crisis or an inability to pay their back rent. Um, the San Francisco African American Chamber of Commerce was a recipient of the recent Dream Keepers Fund, and we will be rolling out our um, applications for our program um, this upcoming month sometime in July. So just please look out for that. If you'd like to find out more information about that specific program, um, you can also reach out to us at www.sfaacc.org. And I'll also put the email address for our um, admin as well. Thank you. Thank you, Bavette, for joining us and for all the work that you do. I'm gonna get started in sharing the presentation now. Uh, Thanks, which you'll Julie. sure, um, and we'll Anna will send out the um, the slides to all our webinar participants. Yes. While you set that up, um, I just wanted to say something in Spanish because I know we might have some Spanish speaking cl um, uh, clients on the line. Um, just uh, para los que necesitan interpretación, hay un icono abajo uh, de Zoom que, que se ve como un um, Un mundo um, donde dice interpretación um, y nada más cambia a español, um, al canal de español para poder accesar um, el, el canal de español. Thank you, Ana. Um, so we're going to get started with the slides. My name is Julie Gilgoff. I'm presenting on behalf of Legal Services for Entrepreneurs and acknowledging our pro bono partner, Aaron Fox, who helped create this presentation. So this workshop is specific to San Francisco, examining the commercial eviction moratorium that exists within the city and county. So if you're from another jurisdiction, please see LCCR's events calendar for an Oakland or San Jose specific workshop. This presentation is not meant to be taken as legal advice. It's meant to educate and provide information about the protections of the San Francisco moratorium, offer strategies and negotiation tactics to use with your landlord. So if you're looking for legal advice specific to your current situation, the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights offers no cost commercial lease consultations. We'll discuss the application process of how to sign up for these consultations later in the presentation. So the agenda for our presentation today will first focus on the initial steps you should take before you start the negotiation process with your landlord, lease provisions to look out for that can enhance your argument when you're negotiating, then we'll focus on the provisions of the San Francisco Commercial Eviction Moratorium as they apply to your small business, followed by some tips for negotiating with your landlord. For questions, we'll pause in between each of the three sections, but you can write your questions into the chat at any time. And Ana Vargas Lau, LSE's program assistant, will collect these questions to pose to us during our breaks. So when you're getting ready to negotiate with your landlord, the first step is to review your lease. And when I say lease, I mean every part of it. Oftentimes there's a primary lease, there may be an addendum, appendix, different exhibits. So you just wanna make sure you have the entire universe of lease documents to review. If you're seeking legal help from an attorney, 
make sure that you locate and send each of these documents. If you sublet your space from someone, which means you have the sublease with the person who's the original tenant, and they have a master lease with the owner or landlord, you want to review both, both your lease and the master lease, which may include provisions that affect you as the subtenant, which might not be included in your sublease agreement. If you've leased your space for multiple terms, if you've renewed your lease, you'll want to re review each version of the lease that you've signed. Oftentimes there's an option to extend without signing a brand new lease document, and it's the original lease that you've signed that might contain helpful terms and provisions that I'll now discuss. And finally, if you don't have a lease, this is a good reason to sign up for a commercial lease consultation with LSE. Your protections under the moratorium are going to depend on your agreement with your landlord and prior negotiations. Not having a written lease might give you options to terminate the lease if that's an option that interests you. So as you review the written lease, if you have one, there are specific terms that you wanna look out for. You can look out for these buzz buzzwords and identify these provisions so that when you come to your consultation with an attorney or initiate a talk directly with your landlord, you'll have a head start of the arguments you could make. One such lease term to look out for is common area maintenance or other shared expenses, often referred to as CAM expenses and sometimes denoted as additional rent. You may argue that since the common areas were restricted or shut down during the pandemic and your landlord didn't have to incur any expenses to maintain the shared areas, you shouldn't have to pay these costs. I had the experience of working with a client whose landlord was trying to pass capital improvements to tenants, which is prohibited, is not considered a CAM expense, and also another landlord trying to pass electrical costs to install exit signs, which was keeping the building up to code, these should not be included in your CAM expenses. So the bottom line is if some of the costs under CAM seems fishy to you, you have the right to ask your landlord to see bills and an accounting of these expenses. If something doesn't seem right, you should talk to an attorney. Also look out for abatement terms. These are provisions in the lease that allow you to decrease the rent paid in the occurrence of certain circumstances, like if you can't access your building or if your landlord is cutting off services like utilities. So if there's any mention of abatement, make a note. On the contrary, there might be a lease provision stating that the landlord won't be liable for these disruptions. So then you couldn't make these arguments. Also keep your eyes out for the words force majeure, which literally means acts of God. A force majeure clause would excuse you from having to pay rent if there was an unforeseeable catastrophic event like the pandemic. In terms of frustration of purpose, if your lease states that the sole purpose of your leased property is to conduct a certain type of business, like a hair salon, auto repair shop, or restaurant, and it was impossible to open your business because of lockdown, this is another argument why you shouldn't have to pay rent, at least for the time that the shelter in place order was in effect and the business was completely closed. If you're seeing that guarantee, if you're seeing any provisions that guarantee your rights to access the premise, this would be another possible reason why you shouldn't have to pay rent during those months when access was denied by government orders. If you see a condemnation or casualty provision, which are extremely common in California because of earthquakes, this might be of use. These provisions were meant to apply to physical damage to the property like an earthquake or if the building burned down. Um, it answers the question if the tenant has to continue to pay rent or would they be able to terminate the lease under these conditions. Some condemnation or casualty provisions could be interpreted to cover a loss of access or use due to government shutdowns. So these might be useful to you. If you're in a building with multiple commercial spaces like a food court or a shopping mall, there might be provisions in the lease that require the landlord to meet certain obligations like maintaining a level of occupancy, this might be additional grounds for rent reduction if the landlord didn't maintain those occupancy requirements. Also keep your eyes out for the term quiet enjoyment. The, this means that you have the right to inhabit your space free from recurring disruptions or disturbances. If there have been significant disruptions or disturbances created by the landlord, this would be helpful to your case. Also look out for provisions regarding your security deposit. There's usually language in the lease outlining when a security deposit can be applied to missed rent. 
and when a security deposit might must be repaid. So our suggestion is to review these provisions to understand how the funds might be used for rent repayment. When negotiating with your landlord or rent repayment plan, you might want to incorporate the security deposit as part of your proposal if you're having a hard time making the back rent. So, and we've, um, we've come up with a sample repayment plan that you could use to negotiate with your landlord, which will be sent to you in an email with the other follow-up materials. So you're reviewing your lease documents and looked out for these keywords. You're next gonna wanna reach out to your landlord to start the negotiation process. It's really important to keep an open dialogue with your landlord. Written communication is necessary to prove that you've attempted to engage in negotiations to come up with a repayment plan or reduction of the total rent that's owed. If you're not paying rent, it's important that your landlord know the reasons you're not able to pay rent, that it's due, it might seem obvious, but you should explain that it's due to pandemic related financial hardship, like a loss of earnings during the pandemic because of reduced hours of operation, complete closure during certain months. And each month that you can't pay the entire rent amount, you should continue to reach out to your landlord in writing to explain your situation, even if it's the same reason as the previous month, and even if the landlord is not responding. So make sure that this communication is in writing. You have a record of each time you communicate with your landlord about your inability to pay the full rent and what you can afford to pay. If your landlord counters your offer uh, to only pay, let's say, half the rent or a quarter of the rent with another proposal to pay more, you should continue responding, writing why their proposal is or is not feasible. You might wanna offer a rent scheme that make, takes into account your actual earnings and pays a percentage of that amount, although there's no legal obligation for your landlord to accept less than the whole amount once the uh, moratorium ends and once your forbearance period ends, which I'll later explain. If your landlord asks for accountings and bank statements to prove your financial hardship, don't feel pressured to show them all your bank statements. Instead, you might show them a QuickBooks accounting of gains and losses. That's one idea that worked for one client. Also, you may assert that it's irrelevant whether you've received government assistance as um, you might ask the landlord what government assistance it has received or just say, you know, I prefer not to answer that. I'll just tell you about my gains and losses. So make sure that as you gather all relevant paperwork and begin the negotiation process, with your landlord, you should keep copies of all relevant paperwork, emails, texts, scans of letters, and your lease in one consolidated place on your computer. You might scan, or if you don't have a computer, just take photos and make sure you have a copy of everything. You might scan a copy of your lease and all appendices onto a folder on your computer, taking screenshots of a text message with your landlord, saving emails to this folder. A scan of any written letters that you've mailed to your landlord should also be kept or photocopies. Save copies of voicemails as audio files. You might need a special app to save voicemails. So look into how to do this before you speak to your landlord or um, wanna record one of their voicemails. Really think it through if you've recorded every type of communication to your landlord to document the outreach that you've made to initiate and further negotiations. Under the SF moratorium written communication is, um, is mandated to qualify for protections, but you know oral communication should just be recorded. It might be relevant if there is a lawsuit initiated at some point. You'll wanna show your attorney all these records when you seek an appoint, appointment too. So next I'm curious if there's any questions so far. So if there's not any questions, I'll uh, move on for, um, to explain details of the San Francisco moratorium. San Francisco Board of Supervisors eviction moratorium or commercial eviction moratorium is tied to Governor Newsom's statewide executive order and any extension. As the heading states, local protections in San Francisco currently extend through September 30th, 2021. This was recently extended from June 30th, 2021. So all the same protections that previously existed still apply. The moratorium protections apply to commercial and other small business tenants with gross receipts at or below $25 million registered to do business in San Francisco, as well as nonprofit organizations. You must document in writing to your landlord that you're unable to make 
for rent payments because of pandemic-related financial hardship to qualify for eviction uh, protections under the moratorium. The moratorium protects qualified businesses and nonprofits from being evicted for non-payment of rent due to substantial decrease in income caused by COVID, which can be documented. It doesn't obligate the landlord to accept any rent reduction beyond the period of the moratorium or the forbearance period. And any, um, you know, eventually the rent accrued during the pandemic must be repaid subject to any agreements that you and your landlord reach. Um, so this means that if, uh, if you don't reach an agreement with your landlord to the contrary, um, and you don't fit into one of the tiers that I'll later, later explain, uh, your landlord can uh, technically initiate a lawsuit after the moratorium expires, which right now is set to expire October 1st, 2021. Um, the moratorium might be further extended and there you can also sub, you know, subject any agreement with your landlord that you reach. Your landlord can agree to additional extensions in their discretion. One important thing to bear in mind is even though it seems like your landlord has the, all the power in demanding the full rent under your lease, they also probably want to avoid bringing you to court if they could help it to save the investment of time and money and court fees, let alone the uncertainty of how courts will rule during this time when most businesses have had trouble meeting their rent payments. So your landlord has a stake in reaching a plan for repayment of rent that works for both of you, even if it doesn't seem like that in their communications. The protections of the moratorium apply to qualified commercial tenants, subtenants, and month-to-month -month holdover tenants, which means that if your lease has expired and you haven't yet negotiated a new lease, the terms of the previous lease apply and you are still protected under uh, the moratorium against eviction. You do not have to pay rent during the forbearance period that I'll explain, nor uh, can you accrue additional interest or late fees on past rent due. So this is a little repetitive, but to claim protection under the moratorium, you must, you must write to your landlord on a monthly basis and outline that you're not able to pay rent due to financial related hardship, COVID related financial hardship. Do this each and every month, even if a landlord is not responding. You're not required to pay all the rent during the moratorium, but you're encouraged to pay what you can. Your landlord can agree to additional extensions at their discretion. Under the moratorium, your landlord is prohibited from modifying the lease after the start of the pandemic. So that means your landlord can't change the terms. Um, and this is meant to acknowledge that during the pandemic, it was hard to communicate. Uh, they may not have been able to physically mail you something or post a sign on your door. Um, so that's why you're, you have these additional protections. So finally, this is an outline of the four tiers that was created by the Board of Supervisors Ordinance. And it's really explicit in when your business has to repay the back rent that's owed. If you're a tier one business, which means that you had 10 or fewer full-time employees, and note this is as of November 1st, 2020. So even if you've since reopened and hired additional employees, this refers to November 1st, 2020. Uh, if you've had 10 or fewer full-time employees at that time, you have two years to repay the deferred rent. So that's 24 months from the time the moratorium expires. So that would be as of now, September 30th, 2023. And um, the Moratorium also gives tier one businesses the option to terminate your lease by giving landlords 30 days notice um, and paying all the rent through the termination date. And I have to say that I've seen a number of uh, tenants exercise this right. You are a tier one business, you have 10 or fewer full-time employees as of November 1st, 2020. You give 30 days notice to terminate your lease, but you still can't afford to pay back all the rent that's do. So um, this is also yet to be seen how a court will rule, but uh, you still have the option to terminate your lease. And then it's just a matter of working out the details with your landlord and really hoping for some government assistance for um, repaying the back rent too. Um, tier two businesses have, uh, or they had 10 to 24 full-time employees as of November, November 1st, 2020 and you have 18 months to repay the deferred rent from the time the moratorium expires. Tier three businesses had 25 to 49 full-time employees 
as of November 2020, and you have up to 12 months to repay deferred rent. And again, during this time, no interest can be accrued either. And here for businesses that have 50 plus full-time employees as of November 2020, you must pay the deferred rent when the moratorium period expires with the rationale being if you have, um, if you have the revenue to maintain 50 plus full-time employees, you should have the money to pay back the rent, whether, that not, whether or not that is the case. So if you're a tier one business and have under 10 full-time employees as of November, 2020, you have the option of terminating your lease without incurring any fees, provided that you provide your landlord with 30 days notice. Landlords can negotiate and enter into an agreement different from the terms of the ordinance, but they can't reach an agreement. But if they can't reach an agreement with you, the ordinance controls. I have seen agreements um, uh, that landlords try to enter into with clients which signs away the moratorium protections. And my legal advice, though I'm not 100% on this, is that uh, the moratorium guarantees basic protections. And if landlords want to extend agreements beyond that, they can. But I don't believe that landlords can enter into an agreement saying none of the protections apply and this is what stands. I don't think that a court would uphold that agreement. So this last slide of this section emphasizes that now is a time to start negotiations with your landlord while the moratorium is still in place. Your landlord can't evict you for missing any payments during the period while the moratorium is still in effect. So we would recommend working with your landlord now to come up with a written repayment plan. Again, we'll follow up by providing a template rent repayment plan and the slides of this presentation, as well as a form letter that you could present to your landlord stating that you've experienced pandemic related financial hardship and this is the protections and just present that as a starting point if you're having a hard time reaching out directly to your landlord. So we're going to pause again for any questions. So this uh, last section will provide advice about how to negotiate with your landlord. I think there's a hand for oh, sure. Lisa Moore. Lisa Thank Moore, you. I think, will raise their hand. Okay. Uh, Lisa, do you want to ask or, or Anna if, if they've written it? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Well, firstly, thank you for this incredibly helpful meeting. Um, I have, um, or I had a space in Hayes Valley where I was paying you know, prime Hayes Valley retail rent during the pandemic. Um, I continued to pay rent from March through October um, of the, you know, through the shutdown. Um, and even with, um, I believe our landlord did give us a 30% off, you know, um, very well aware of what his mortgage is. And I was basically, my, my, my rent was paying for the entire building. Um, I was continuously calling him not only to work for rent abatement, but also the security in that area was so tough. Um, we were broken into continuously. I couldn't get a, a security gate put up. Um, we had to stay, you know, boarded up during the pandemic. We had needles and, you know, all, all the things that were happening really hit that area um, pretty dramatically. But the long and short of it is by October, I said, this is not sustainable. I've basically given you any extra money that I have, and I need to give you a 30 day notice because I I've been paying you for months. And at that time I did a walkthrough, they took my keys. Now that landlord's coming after me and is wanting the difference between um, what my lease agreement says I paid and what he's now leasing out um, to a different tenant. And when I'm citing some of these ordinances, he's claiming that that I'm reading these ordinances incorrectly and you know, he's gonna sue me. Okay, yeah, this is <laughs> and I'm yeah. I'm not in the space any longer. And right. it seems like if I squat, if I, I don't want to say squatted, but if I stayed in the space, could I have had I mean, yeah. Um, so first, let me ask, are you a tier one business? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you did have um, the option to early terminate your lease. And 
that absolves you from lease obligations. So I could see if you weren't a tier one business and um, in general, if a business abandons the lease um, and the landlord has a duty to mitigate, so I'm glad they found a new tenant, but um, he might be able to make that argument successfully, but not under the protections of the San Francisco moratorium. So if you'd like to apply for our services, um, I or a volunteer attorney would be happy at least to write uh, a letter to your landlord to, you know, to stop harassing you and making this demand. And, um, but the truth is, um, I think that your landlord is probably making, um, you know, threats, hoping to make you just pay more. Um, and I don't think that a, course, a court would enforce the allegations that you have any um, obligation to, you know, make, make him whole. Um, that, that's definitely not included in the moratorium. So please do apply for our services. We'd be happy to write a letter to your landlord. And then other than that, it's really a waiting game. I don't, you know, we have to wait and see if he really does initiate a lawsuit. I don't think that he will, but, and then I, I don't believe the court would rule in his favor. Okay, I, I really appreciate that. You can imagine the, the, yeah, the you know, the, the sort of stress when you're trying to keep your head above water. And then I, I do have one store and I, I, I've been hearing mixed messaging because had I closed my entire business, I, I heard that I could get help, but if you still have a business, I've been hearing sort of mixed messages through the community that that landlord can come after your one existing business, which again is a super tier one at this point. Yeah, yeah. No, in terms of like reaching your personal assets or questions like that, I can't, I can't um, answer right now. But I don't, and I can just imagine all the anxiety that you've been experiencing. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I hope this comment is helpful to other people yeah. and I will certainly be reaching out to um, you and directly. And, and again, thank you so much for this format. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll send the slides and it has a direct link to apply for our services and, you know, writing letters to desist from harassing behavior and kind of setting straight what protections the moratorium provides is something we routine, routinely do. So you and others, I hope you do reach out if that would be helpful to you. Hey, thanks for your Absolutely. Question. Thank you. Sure. Thank you are again. There, sure. Are there any other questions? I'm sorry if I can't see your hands. So just um, you can speak up or. Okay. So we'll continue. Uh, this next section provides advice about negotiation strategies with your landlord. The first step is getting your landlord to come to the table and negotiate. Um, if some of you have a good relationship with your landlord, you'll want to make the proposal yourself. If you don't have a good relationship with your landlord, please do contact us at LSE so that an attorney or we also refer some clients to outside mediators might be able to help um, establish communication. We can make a phone call, write a letter, and just see if that will move things along. But sometimes involving an outside attorney only complicates the matter. Uh, it may, you know if things were going well or you have open communication. If you involve an attorney, sometimes your landlord will also, you know, stop speaking to you and just say, okay, well, now I'll only speak to my attorney. So that's really your call, but it sounds like, you know, a, a lot of people would really benefit from an attorney um, to sort of intimidate the landlord, stop getting them to stop, um, make empty threats and harassing you. And also just clarifying, these are the protections under the moratorium you know, the, if you're a tier one business, you have the right to end your um, lease early if you've gave, given 30 days written notice. Uh, this frees you from uh, lease obligations and you have 24 whole months to pay back the back rent. And um, this again, this won't necessarily prevent your landlord from making certain threats, but uh, the moratorium is meant to be used as an affirmative defense. Um, so it could get them to stop certain behavior, but if they do initiate a lawsuit and you've you know, been in written contact with your landlord each month, um, this is brought as an affirmative defense, which means that it should make the court drop their case and rule in your favor. So when you're negotiating with your landlord, make an ask that's realistic for you. If your business still has not fully rebounded, don't commit to paying the full rental amount. You might offer an amount that's realistic now and also allows you some time, um, which you are allowed under the repayment uh, plans outlined in the, in the moratorium. Um, and the hope is that at least some of the rent will be forgiven by your landlord. 
or by city and county funds, which may be made available in the upcoming months. As we discussed earlier, even though it seems like your landlord has all the power in this dynamic, don't be afraid to ask for the moon. Asking for more than what you think the landlord might agree to initially allows you to him to make a, um, a counter offer and then to eventually reach a compromise in the middle. Um, you know, this is common. You know, I've, I've helped negotiate certain deals. Uh, originally, the tenant says, I can only pay $10,000 as a settlement. Landlord comes back and says 20. We reach a settlement in between 15. So um, just ask for the moon or, you know, what you really think is reasonable. Don't feel pressure to um, beef up what, what you've offered. Um, sometimes um, to ask for an abate abatement or forgiveness of rent during the months you were required to shut down makes perfect sense. Ask for extended deferrals beyond the moratoria if you think you're going to need more than two years to repay everything, but every month you'll make consistent payments. This might be better um, than not getting anything at all. Extended repayment periods beyond which is required by the moratoria you know, are, are commonly accepted. This is uncharted territory, so don't think that certain asks are off the table. You might convert back rent into a loan, um, which you'll eventually repay. Use credit, um, your security deposit towards back rent, and offer to pay full rent going forward if some of the back rent is forgiven. And that's also a common offer is I know I have um, all of this rent that's owed in the past. I can offer $10,000 as a settlement. Maybe you could keep my security deposit. And if you forgive everything else, then I'll pay this amount of rent going forward. Some tenants, you know, if the full rent was 12,000, they'll agree to pay 10,000 for the until the end of the year. So just feel free to get creative, outline what you think is reasonable and realistic for you. If your lease is about to end, consider offering an extension of the lease for a reduction or forgiveness of back rent. Um, these are hard times for a landlord to find new tenants, especially paying the, that same level of rent. If you are a good tenant who made all the rent payments before the pandemic, they might be interested in keeping you on rather than looking for a new tenant in this market. Also, your landlord might ask if you've received any loans like PPP funds. You can answer honestly and emphasize that some of the funds are restricted and how they're used. They're only used for payroll purposes. They can't be used for back rent. Um, and, or even just that you can't afford to use your loans in this way. You have so many other expenses. You might counter and ask if your landlord is receiving any mortgage assistance to acknowledge that they should not be double dipping uh, if they're not in as dire a situation as they might be alleging that they have received some help. Again, feel free to be creative, suggesting a repayment plan, plan tied to a percentage of monthly revenue rather than a set amount, even though that's completely different from what your lease um, outlines. If your landlord is being verbally abusive, only communicate as much as needed to meet moratorium requirements, which might be a quick text or email, anything in writing expressing how much rent you could afford to pay that month, and emphasize that your inability to pay rent is tied to the pandemic-related financial hardship. Unfortunately, although the pandemic protects tenants from non-payment of rent, many landlords are still sidestepping the moratorium by claiming breach of, breach of contract for non-payment of rent and other alleged violations. Um, so again, if you are experiencing that, please do seek our legal assistance. Um, and you know, some of this is yet to be determined how courts will rule. So don't think it's the end of the, the world, even if a landlord has initiated a lawsuit against you. As businesses are reopening and California has officially lifted the COVID related restrictions, um, business is resuming, but not necessarily back to normal. So this does not mean that you're earning what you earned before and that you have to make full rent payments. It's unclear whether the commercial eviction moratorium will be extended past September 30th, 2021, and how courts will rule in terms of potential defenses we discussed, like commercial frustration of purpose. Um, statewide in California, there has been some success in using that argument, at least for the months that you were ordered to completely shut down um, by government mandate, but not necessarily for the months where your business um, was just earning less or could only partially reopen. Court decisions on business interruption insurance coverage has generally been unfavorable, uh, generally hasn't included the pandemic as a covered event, but certain court decisions are currently being appealed and let's see how the court rules on those appeals. 
We suggest that you continue to research financial re resources, um, such as the one listed below um, at the San Francisco Office of Economic and Work Workforce Development. Uh, that's copied onto the slide and will be distributed. Here's a list of other possible grant sources like the Chinatown Storefront Mini Grant, the San Francisco Community Investment Loan and others. And um, the information on the slide outlines whether you could still apply, whether it will be opening soon or the pre-application is, um, is currently open. Uh, unfortunately, the PPP applications are now closed, but there's still other grant and loan resources such as the link displays. If you found this webinar to be helpful or um, made you realize something you know, that you need legal help with, if you'd benefit from one-on-one -on -one legal advice, please apply for our services at Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights uh, Legal Services for Entrepreneurs Program. The link to apply is on this slide and on our website. And um, finally, uh, yeah, it looks like there's a couple questions. Um, Anna, do you wanna write into the chat um, our general uh, email address? I'm not sure if Anna's having um, internet problems, so I will um, copy that myself. So it's lse at lccrsf.org. Great. And, um, and mine is also, um, I'll also copy it. I think Anna did it. <laughs> okay, great, great. Great. And I'll also write my personal address. Um, if anything is time sensitive, typically we have about um, a week turnaround um, from when you submit the application to scheduling an intake. Um, that, that's kind of the minimum. So if you do have time sensitive needs, please reach out to me directly um, or you know, in your intake, um, if you express that you have time sensitive needs, it should be expedited. Um, we're trying to accelerate everything with our pro bono partners and contract attorneys and then handling more cases in house um, so we do hope to provide everyone um, with help in a timely fashion. So I hope that this has been helpful. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And if there's no um, other questions, we'll um, we'll end the the webinar. So thank you, everyone. <laughs>